Welcome to Text to Nation. We're at Sony's headquarters in New York, and with me is Mark Weir, Senior Technical Manager for Digital Imaging at Sony. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Great to be with you, Fred. Well, you've got a brand new camera that you've just announced. Mm -hmm. It's called the RX10 Mark IV. Yes, this is a fourth in our RX10 series, and this type of camera couples the performance of a one-inch image sensor together with a long telephoto high magnification lens, 24 millimeters to 600 millimeters range. So it's 24 got, to 600. Yep, in the palm of your hand, just a little over two pounds, wide aperture, 24 millimeter to 600 millimeter lens, coupled with a large one inch image sensor to give you the kind of performance that you'd find in a professional digital SLR, but something that's much lighter and much more tractable and mobile. So it's really an amazing camera. What are, what are some of the differences between this and the previous generation? So the RX10 Mark III is the latest version that we have in market right now. Uh, to realize the performance of the Mark IV, what we've done is we've taken our stacked CMOS sensor and equipped it with the phase detection AF that's commonly found in digital SLRs. This is a focusing system that is depth aware. It always understands the uh, distance from the camera to the subject. So its ability to track erratically moving subjects and focus at amazingly fast speeds is really a hallmark of the RX10 Mark IV. This camera has the fastest AF lock speed of any camera available. The AF it, meaning autofocus, auto obviously. Focus. It can lock focus in as little as three one hundredths of a second. In addition to its amazing focusing capabilities, we've also advanced its processor so it can capture at 24 frames per second. So literally, 24 frames per second of continuous shooting wow. with autofocus and exposure calculated for each of those frames. Who's going to be the typical buyer, do you think, of, of this camera? Well, the target customer for this is uh, both enthusiasts and professionals alike, but it's primarily those who are tasked with capturing fast-moving action, uh, sports, wildlife, um, uh, Birders, for instance, are, uh, are a huge fan of this type of camera, not only because of the reach of the lens, but in the case of the RX10 Mark IV, they're also going to have uh, one of the fastest focusing systems of any camera in the world together with uh, that reach of the long telephoto lens. Couple that with a 24 frame per second shooting to capture the decisive moment, and you really have a potent combination of imaging power. But anybody who's looking to capture fast action, anybody who's looking for the kind of versatility that this lens provides, travel photographers, for instance, are uh, often very much drawn to this camera because it combines a, what would otherwise be an entire camera bag full of gear, uh, you know, 10, 15 pounds of lenses and camera into something that literally fits in the palm of your hand and weighs just a little over two pounds. And the low light performance on this? It's extraordinary, uh, up to 25,000 ISO. It has a very large image sensor. It has a one-inch image sensor, and it's our stack CMOS construction, so all of the light-sensitive area is unobstructed by circuitry on the top of the sensor. So not only does it have extraordinary um, uh, sensitivity and low noise, but it also has the kind of read speed to be as fast as necessary to capture the action. On top of all of that, it's not just for still photography, it's also a fully capable video camera. You read my mind. <laughs> with, with 4K video capture, in you can shoot in 4K or full HD. You can shoot in high frame rate modes for super slow motion, up to 40 times uh, uh, slowing down of the action. But the most important part of, uh, of it and what sets it apart from other cameras is its focusing system, the phase detection AF, which is common in interchangeable lens cameras, is almost unique in fixed lens cameras like this. So typically, if you want the focusing performance of that type of focusing system, you're working with a much larger uh, and heavier camera. And here, in the case of RX10 Mark IV, you have it all. What is typically three separate lenses uh, would be required to cover this kind of focal length range in a single package. I was going to say, on its face, it's not as small as some of your newer interchangeable lens cameras, but you're not 
schlepping around all of these other lenses. Yeah, it's important to recognize that what the capabilities of the lens. This lens can operate at 600 millimeters at f4. Uh, a 600 millimeter f4 lens for an interchangeable lens digital SLR, for instance, weighs about 15 pounds, and, and it costs <laughs> a and, lot and more than 15. Typically pounds. costs about $10,000, and extends for more than two feet in length. So compare that kind of size and weight um, with a camera this size, and it's an extraordinary feat of miniaturization. Of course, high-performance professional SLRs have their role in many applications, uh, and certainly many photographers depend on cameras like that uh, for their requirements. But to be able to combine all of these characteristics in a camera you can hold in a single hand uh, is an extraordinary achievement and provides exactly what many photographers are looking for. Now, is that uh, the LCD screen on the back, is that fixed or does that, oh, no, uh, this is, uh, is that articulated? Uh, uh, a tilting LCD screen, you can uh, turn it up so that you have the opportunity to shoot at waist level. You can also tilt it back so that you can shoot overhead. And again, the, this kind of versatility, um, this range of focal lengths with image stabilization and high image quality is really a package that uh, has proven to be irresistible for numerous photographers. In fact, we find that the, uh, the customer for this camera, the RX10 series uh, in, uh, so far, is uh, often those that are own interchangeable lens cameras, 70% uh, of them for RX10 Mark III are also owners of interchangeable lens cameras, and um, many of them own full-frame interchangeable lens cameras. So this, for those uh, photographers, is um, an extraordinarily useful alternate. So the sensor on this would be, what, slightly smaller than the APS-C cameras? Yeah, one-inch sensor is um, a little bit smaller than Micro Four Thirds, uh, uh, a little bit smaller than uh, APS-C for sure. But again, it's that combination of this size sensor that allows us to realize a camera of this size. When will it arrive and for how much? This will be coming to market in the middle of October and it'll be positioned at $1,700. $1,700. So if I'm a consumer thinking of investing in, in, a, in a new camera or camera system or, or wanting to add on to what I have, you're making it tough for me to make up my mind. So tell me what the, what, what the real advantages or disadvantages of this. Why would I not want to buy this instead of, say, one of your other great cameras in the A-series, for instance? Well, there, let's face it, interchangeable lens cameras provide uh, options in lenses, a, an array of options in lenses that would be very difficult to realize with just one lens. You're not going to do a fisheye effect or something like that with this yeah, camera? Yeah, I mean, even though this uh, lens will cover from 24 millimeters to 600 millimeters, it, uh, it focuses on reach and telephoto range while maintaining usable wide angle. However, um, uh, even further wide angle um, uh, or m many other types of lenses that are available for interchangeable lens cameras can't be incorporated into just one lens. So that's one aspect. Um, another aspect is that uh, if you're in extreme uh, shooting situations, for instance, in extraordinarily low light, um, it might be easier. There are larger and larger sensor cameras that have some advantages in extremely low light capability that would be tough uh, to capture with a sensor this size. But other than that, uh, the range of focal length, the reach that the lens provides, the speed of the focusing system and the speed of the frame rate, together with the video capabilities as well, as well make it a pretty tough combination to walk away from. The thing that really separates this camera and what's so new about this camera and what's a world's first for this camera is the ability of this camera, uh, uh, this type of camera, uh, to incorporate the focusing system that's just as fast uh, as even the highest end professional digital SLRs. Up until now, incorporating that kind of a focusing system in a camera like this was impossible. The devices to make it happen were not available. So the real breakthrough with RX10 Mark IV is to be able to incorporate that kind of focusing system in a camera of this type to yield a kind of flexibility and performance 
that is not available in any other camera. Again, it sounds like there's a lot to love. It's the Sony RX10 Mark IV. And as they say on TV, but wait, there's more. Oh, yeah. You have another new camera that's, that's, that's uh, recently announced called the RX0. It's a lot smaller there, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> At the other end of our RX series spectrum is the RX0. Uh, this was uh, introduced at the IFA show in Berlin uh, last week, and uh, RX0 is really quite uh, a different kind of a camera. It uses the same image sensor as, that we use, um, same size image sensor that we use in a camera like the RX10. But so you've got a one-inch sensor and a camera that's a little bit more than an inch yep. total? <laughs> Fred, just be careful not to swallow it. Uh, <laughs> But what we're doing with RX0 is yield, uh, realizing... For medical purposes if I do, but go ahead. <laughs> we're realizing a camera of a size and type that provides the kind of imaging performance that creators are looking for in an incredibly compact size. It actually has a one-inch image sensor and a 24-millimeter Zeiss lens in a space that's, well, um, to say it's palm-sized is... Uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, underestimating its capabilities. There's a few of them on the palm, but go oh, ahead. Yeah. You, you, so sure what is it designed for? Action camera? I mean, the, the, from well, the size, you would think yeah, it's... Yeah, it's uh, easily mistaken to be a point-of-view camera or an action camera, and certainly it can uh, deliver the kind of imaging performance of a much larger camera to uh, creatives who need a camera like that. However, what we're finding the real advantage of a camera like this is, and one of its greatest potentials, is the ability to accomplish multiple view capture. Uh, the, we see image capture evolving from a single camera and a single point of view uh, to multiple cameras that can capture from uh, multiple angles. Describe and, for me what you mean. Well, take for example uh, VR or 360 degree capture. That requires uh, multiple cameras capturing multiple angles of view. If you take a look at the rigs that are capturing that type of uh, stills and video, uh, the challenge for the creators is to pack several cameras, in some cases as many as a dozen, into a space that's small enough so that they can capture the VR or capture the 360 degree view that they need. The challenge in, in, and to do so with high image quality and high video quality. The challenge is that cameras that are that small to date have typically just been POV cameras, action cameras, with tiny image sensors and uh, pan focus lenses that really have no focusing mechanism in them. So to capture the, the quality that's needed uh, in that type of application, uh, there are no cameras have yet been developed with the imaging performance of a larger camera that will fit in the small space that the application requires. Until so, now. Until, until RX0. I mean, imagine, if you will, what this camera uses the same size image sensor as this camera in a fraction of its size. It uses the same image sensor as this camera in a fraction of its size. Wow. Yeah. The dif difference is that you have a, it's a fixed focal length? I yeah, this is a fixed focal length 24 millimeter lens. The entire camera module actually exists in just the first oh, three quarters of an inch of space in the camera. And uh, to incorporate a one inch image sensor and a lens that can actually focus in a size this small is quite a feat. Again, it's important to realize that a POV or an action camera uh, may be this size, but those are with tiny image sensors and uh, fixed focal length and fixed focus lenses that don't even have the ability to focus. So what do you see as being the, the primary uses for it? Well, whenever high image quality and a very small and uh, size camera is necessary, and also a very rugged camera, um, it's uh, obviously there are small cameras which don't have the durability of this one because in the applications in which it's being used, um, typically by professionals or industrial applications for these multi-angle view, this camera is waterproof. It's made from uh, a block of aluminum alloy. So not only is it drop 
proof. And you do have the LCD screen on the back we should point out oh, as well. Oh, sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, it's drop proof to two meters. It's crush proof to uh, uh, 440 foot pounds of force. Um, it's, re it's really quite an engineering marvel, which you really need to see the in inside of the camera <coughs> to understand how it's built. But in addition, it's important to realize that the camera is also designed for use with um, multiple arrays. And we have some uh, uh, rigs set up over in the demonstration area where you can see how they're used together. And, and the video capability on this one? Uh, this shoots full HD at 24p, 30p, or 60p. It can shoot super slow motion at up to 40 times uh, slow motion. And it can also output 4K uh, for recording on an external recorder. It can shoot 16 frames per second uh, of still images. And you can connect this in networks of cameras uh, with a smart device like a tablet or a phone and our Play Memories mobile app. You can connect five cameras together and operate them. Uh, through a router, you can uh, connect um, many more than five cameras. And we'll also be introducing in the spring a wired network solution so that you can control the cameras through a network switch and an Ethernet cable. It sounds like you're unleashing a whole lot of creativity potential here. Tell us about availability and pricing. Uh, this model is coming in uh, the, pr pretty much the middle of October, and it's positioned at $700. Again, this one is the RX-0, and before we were talking about the RX-10 Mark IV. Mm -hmm. Mark Weir, thank you for taking the time with us. Thanks, Fred. Great to be with you. And thanks for watching.